Hey everyone, welcome back to QuantProf. Today, we are going to solve a series of quant interview problems that get progressively more challenging. Check the description for more quant interview resources. Let's start with an ultra easy problem. Two fair six-sided dice are rolled. What is the probability that the second die rolls a strictly higher number than the first? Here's the solution. There are 36 possible outcomes in total. In 15 of them, the second die shows a strictly higher number than the first die. So the required probability is 15 over 36. All right, let's move on to the next problem. The numbers 1 through 10 are written on a blackboard. We randomly fill the spaces between them with either a plus or minus sign. What is the probability that the above expression evaluates to zero? Pause the video here if you want to give it a try. We have five even numbers, and their combined contribution will always be even, regardless of the signs placed in front of them. Similarly, we have five odd numbers, whose total will always be odd, no matter how the signs are arranged. Therefore, the above expression will always result in an odd number, and as a result, it can never be equal to zero. Hence, the required probability is zero. Here's the next problem. We randomly select a number between 100 and 400 inclusive. Call this number P. What is the probability that P raised to the power P is a perfect square. P raised to the power P is clearly a perfect square if P is even since the exponent is even in that case. There are 151 even numbers in the sample space. On the other hand, if P is odd, then P raised to the power P is a perfect square if and only if P itself is a perfect square. There are five such numbers, so there are 156 numbers for which P raised to the power P is a perfect square. Since there are 301 numbers in our sample space, the required probability is 156 over 301. Let's move on to the next problem. We have an 8 cross 8 grid. Alice and Bob take turns placing knights on the grid. For example, Alice can place the first knight here. Bob must then place a knight on a square where no knight has been placed, and that isn't attacked by any previously placed knight. So, Bob cannot place a knight on any of the blue squares. Suppose Bob places a knight on this square, then Alice must place a knight on a square where no knight has been placed, and that isn't attacked by any previously placed knight, and the game continues in this manner. The player who cannot place a knight loses. So if Alice goes first, who has a winning strategy under optimal play? Here's the solution. Bob has a winning strategy. Consider this green line. Suppose Alice places a knight on this square. Bob can respond by placing a knight on the square that is the mirror image across the green line. Since these knights lie on the same column, they cannot attack each other. At any point during the game, when it's Alice's turn, the board will be symmetrical across the green line. If Alice can place a knight on one side, then Bob can always respond by placing a knight on the mirrored square on the other side. So, Bob will always have a response, and hence, Bob has a winning strategy. Let's consider another problem. How many permutations of the numbers 1 through 9 are there, such that each number differs by at most 1 from some number to its left? For example, consider this permutation. For 6, we have 5 to the left that differs by 1. For 4, we have 5 to the left with a difference of 1. Similarly, for 7, there is 6 to the left, and the same holds true for all subsequent numbers. Note that the number with a difference of 1 does not need to be immediately to the left. It should just be somewhere earlier in the sequence. So how many such permutations are there? Pause the video here if you want to give it a try. The last number must be 1 or 9. Let's prove this claim. Let the last number be n. Assume that the first number is greater than n. Since n is the last number, n minus 1 must lie to its left. Since the first number is greater than n according to our assumption, n minus 1 cannot be the first number in the permutation. So either n or n minus 2 must lie to the left of n minus 1. Since n is the last number, n minus 2 must lie to the left. Similarly, n minus 3 must lie to the left of n minus 2 and so on. We can continue like this indefinitely. But the smallest number in the permutation is 1, so we cannot continue like this indefinitely. Therefore, this is a contradiction. Similarly, if we assume that the first number is smaller than n, we can make similar arguments with n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on. Therefore, the last number must be either 1 or 9. So we have two options for the last number. Suppose we place 1 in the last position. Now we have the same problem, but with the numbers 2 through 9. By the claim we proved earlier, the second last position can be occupied by 2 or 9. Thus, we again have two options. We can continue this process until we reach the first position. At the first position, only one number will remain, and hence we will have only one option. So, we had two choices for each of the last eight positions and one choice for the first position. Therefore, the number of permutations is 2 raised to the power 8, which is equal to 256. Let's consider another problem. 50 passengers, numbered 1 through 50, are boarding a plane with 50 seats, where each passenger I is assigned to seat I. However, the first 10 passengers are drunk. 
Passengers board the plane one at a time in order from 1 to 50. Each of the first 10 passengers selects a random, unoccupied seat. Every subsequent passenger sits in their assigned seat if it is still available. Otherwise, they choose a random seat from the remaining unoccupied ones. So, what is the expected number of passengers who end up sitting in their assigned seats? Try to solve this on your own. Hope you liked the video. If you want to learn how to solve these kinds of interview problems, we invite you to check out our course, Quant Interview Masterclass, where we teach you how to think when solving difficult problems. We also cover the entire theory specifically tailored for quant interviews, along with over a thousand problems. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Until then, Godspeed.